and waving over that way, invite you to go ahead to Flourish Worship. Thanks for coming up. sermon series for this month, Share the Joy. It fits in with our vision theme for this year, which is forward in mission. What's your piece in the puzzle? Knowing that a part of the piece of each one of us, the puzzle that we have to bring, or the piece of the puzzle we have to bring, is this piece of sharing the joy of life in Christ, life in God's love with others. And when we share the joy we experience in God's love, that joy increases. It's just that way with, with joy in general. I think about the fact that in three weeks here, I'm going to share something that's bringing me a lot of joy. In three weeks, uh, our daughter Lauren is getting married. Yahoo! It's great. <laughs> We're really excited about that. And I invite you to be praying for me because I'm going to be officiating. And as you might know from uh, being around me at all, I'm... I feel the emotions, you know, and so uh, hopefully I can hold it together well enough to be able to actually speak during the service. So looking forward to that. We were out there just uh, three months ago. Uh, my wife Donna threw a virtual shower for Lauren. Uh, we do that because uh, we have family living across the states, friends across the states, and around the world. And so a Zoom shower was a way in which everybody could participate, and we just had a a blast, a joyful time together. And one of the things that happened while we were out in Seattle, where Lauren lives, is the mountains were out, as they say it out there. The clouds weren't there, so you could see the mountains. And it just takes my breath away. The mountains are something that just bring me so much joy. And so over and over, and my wife would say over and over and over again, I kept saying, look, look, look. There it is. There's the mountain. There. I, I said to her yesterday that, you know, you remember coming up that one incline and there would be Mount Rainier. And so every time I'd say, look, there's Mount Rainier. And she said, it wasn't just Mount Rainier. It's every time you saw a mountain. He said, look, look. She said, and so one time after I'd interrupted her again saying, look, she said, you know, you can wait until I'm finished with my sentence. I, I do see the mountain. But, you know, it's one of those things. I just can't contain myself. I want to share the joy. And, of course, when we share the joy, our own joy just increases. We, we know that that's true. And in today's passage from Isaiah chapter 55, we have the prophet Isaiah, who is this prophet, at least in the second half of the book, that is so full of joy as he's speaking to the exiles, these people uh, who had lived in Judah, Jerusalem, uh, the temple there had been destroyed in 586 B.C., that those people were carted off into Babylon, and for some 60, 70 years, they're stuck there, and they're wondering, has God forgotten us? Is the Babylonian God stronger than we are? Has God forgotten his covenant with Abraham and with David? And Isaiah comes up and says, no, he hasn't forgotten, not by a long shot. God's inviting you to, yes, come back to the land, but even more so, to come back to God. Isaiah wants to share the joy that God is offering with God's people. And so in Isaiah 55, we, we hear the prophet proclaiming it this way. He says, Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully. And eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. 
I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he is near. Call upon him while he is near. Let the unrighteous turn, from the wicked turn from their thoughts. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they've watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. You shall go out with joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you hear the prophet's excitement? Come, all of you who are hungry, who are thirsty, come. You know, there's imperative after imperative, and each one of them is not get your act together. Each one of them is come, buy without money, without price. Listen, live, delight yourself. This is what God offers to us. You can't buy your way in. You can't earn your way in. We can't attain it on our own, but it's there for the having. And the prophet invites us to come. Here at Salem, our mission statement is to inspire and equip all generations to connect, grow, and go into life and ministry as disciples of Jesus Christ, celebrating God's grace and sharing it with joy. And I think about that first word that we have, the connect, grow, go, that connect piece. We're serious about that. We long for each one of us to connect with God, for all people to connect, to come to know that that living water, that love of God is available to give life to each and every person on this planet. And there's joy when we share that. Our own joy increases as we share that. I think about what the prophet says here to the exiles Return to the land, yes, but return to God most of all. If you return to God, all the other blessings of God are available for you. It's like what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be yours as well. As we come to God, we come to experience that fullness of life that God offers. Think of Psalm 16, verse 11. You show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. Come to the waters, the prophet says. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. The promise is that God will accomplish God's purpose in our lives and through us as we come to him. It's like the power tool, you know, that is pretty useless until it's plugged in. And so, too, for us, we need to be plugged in to God, to the source of life, the source of all power. And when we are, we're not just a kind of a heavy lump on the log sitting there. We become something that can accomplish great things. It's what Jesus is talking about in John chapter 15, verse 5, where he says, I'm the vine, you're the branches. 
If you abide in me, plug in to me, and I abide in you, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. And so as we head into this fall, I'm so excited about the opportunity God has given us to move forward on our mission, to share the joy of life in Christ, of God's love with others. But we cannot do that if we aren't plugging in, if we are not abiding. One of the great tragedies in the church is that we go through the motions. This happens over and over again. We're good Christian people, and we, maybe we even read our Bible, and we do our sacraments and our rituals, and we follow the rules, and, but there's no joy, there's no life. And then we say, hey, come join us. And then what? Going through the motions? Doing our duty? It's good. We want to invite people into the life, but we can only share that if that life is truly alive in us. If that joy is real for us. And the only way that can happen is as we come to the waters ourselves, as we keep coming and connecting, as we stay plugged in to the source of power. And so as we come to this fall, I want to invite, call, encourage. What's the word? I'm praying that we will come to the waters That as our schedules are kind of being shifted around for many of us, that we will be intentional about making time with God at the center. That you'll take time to come back next week and be here week after week, not just to go through the motions, not just to be a good Christian, but to seek God's presence and pray for God's spirit. To come And when you sit down, say, God, help me to worship you today and help me to hear the word you have for me today. I want to invite you when you see me or Terry or one of the other pastors stepping up to preach, to pray for the pastor who's going to be preaching, but also to say a prayer for yourself. God, help me today to come to the waters. Help me to listen to what you have for me to hear. We need to be doing this as a community, week by week. This Wednesday night, we start up our midweek programs. We'll have small groups that are starting up soon. We have adult Christian formation programs starting next Sunday morning. I want to encourage you to be a part of these things, to come to the waters, to connect, to listen, to eat of what actually gives life, gives joy, and then to invite others to join you. So as you're setting your schedule this fall, I just invite you to think about making your connection here at church a part of your intentional commitment this fall, this year. And be inviting others to join you. And then on a personal level, to set it in your schedule. When is that time each day that you can be still before God? That you can actually open up the Bible and read some verses. Maybe even read them out loud. On our website, there's a resource section you could click. There's something called Lectio Divina, a way of praying the scriptures. I do it every day. And it helps me to listen. Not just to read, but to listen for God's word. And as we listen, it gives life. It guides us. It empowers us. It truly is the, the bread of life. Come to the waters. I think of some of those psalms, like Psalm 46, be still and know that I am God. And how when we take the time to do that, to let our lives get oriented each day and each week, oriented back to who God is, that everything else begins to fall into place. It's when we are still and we know who God is that we can remember this promise that God made to to David, that the people began to wonder, did he forget that? Isaiah says, no, he he didn't forget that. And I love the way the prophet says, you see, I made him a witness to the people. I made him a leader and a commander for the people. Did Did you hear that? Wasn't it David was so phenomenal in his own right? God took David, 
and made him to be a witness. God took David and made him to be a leader and a commander. It wasn't Abraham that was so virile at the age of 100 that he became the father of many nations. God took Abraham. God took Sarah and made them the parents to many nations. This is what we've been talking about in recent weeks as we've looked at the apostle Peter. You know, sometimes he got it so right. He was just so good. And sometimes he felt flat on his face. Peter didn't become the rock upon which Jesus would build his church because Peter was so great. God took Peter and made him to be that rock. And God can take us, each one of us, as we come to him and accomplish abundantly far more, as the Apostle Paul says, abundantly far more than all we could ask or imagine. We just need to come and connect. We just need to come and abide. We just need to come and listen and then step forward to live. You shall go out with joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. As we come to Jesus, as we come to God, as we come to the word this fall, empowered by God's spirit, we can step out with joyful confidence to do our piece in the puzzle to serve in the way God is calling us to serve, to be a part of the movement of God's kingdom into our world, God's good purposes being accomplished. Because his word does not go out empty, does not come back to him empty. It succeeds in the thing for which he sent it. So may we receive God's word this fall. May we step forward with joyful confidence. And it, may it be a witness to the glory of God as we do. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you so much that you invite us again and again and again to come to you, to listen to your word, to trust your love. Thank you that you called the exiles to come back to the land and to get about the hard work of rebuilding the city and the walls and the temple but you invited them to come and do it in your power, in your love, guided and formed by your word. God, this fall, as we come to you, empower us to do the work you're calling us to do, to move forward in mission, each of us doing our part, that your love may be shared and that the joy we experience in you may overflow as a blessing to many. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mark. If you are able, please rise.